Hello, I'm Stephen Hayes from Mobile Gardens. What I wanted to talk to you about today was a way I've come up with to automate testing of nutrients in your water. This is my aquaponics area here where I try various inventions and experiments. This, for example, is a smart fish feeder that monitors the activity of the fish and how much they consume so it only feeds them as much as they'll eat so you don't have to worry about overfeeding the fish. But that's not what this video is about. In this video I want to talk to you about how you test the water. Now the way that people typically test water is something like the API freshwater test kit that contains various reagents. You mix them into your water you wait for a little bit and then read the results based on color. And it's kind of the gold standard for uh, testing your water. Uh, there are uh, a few problems with it as far as I'm concerned. One, it's kind of a pain to, to run these tests. Uh, two, if you get busy like I am and it says, for example, to wait five minutes to read the results, you typically forget about it you come back in 30 minutes and the results are all brown. You have no idea what the readings uh, were. Uh, but it's, it's quite accurate and it's quite reliable. Uh, there are other companies that make similar tests. There's other tests that can be done for things like alkalinity, uh, potassium, etc. All sorts of tests of this ilk that can be used. But it's not automated. For things like pH, you can automate it with things like this pH probe. Now this works quite well, but as you can see it gets kind of grungy. And it requires recalibration. Now the recalibration process uh, can lead to errors, so typically it has to be checked against the uh, something like the API test kit to ensure that the readings are are correct. It drifts over time. Occasionally you have to replace the probes, but it works for pH. But for other things like nitrates or ammonia, there aren't uh, easy solutions for automation. You know, the probes are very, very expensive. They require frequent and complex recalibration, or in some cases, uh, electronic uh, probes don't seem to even exist. So what I wanted to talk to you about is something I've come up with to try to automate this process. So it's over 100 degrees here. Let's get out from the heat and go inside to my lab and I want to show you what I'm talking about. Thanks. Welcome to the Robo Gardens lab. Let me show you what we have here. First, I need to take off the cover, which looks suspiciously like a uh, painted trash can. Um, and then you can see the auto tester. Now, actually, the cover is important. Uh, what this device does is it performs colorimetric tests. So, what's very important in this is to have a consistent light source. So for the most accurate test, it's the really best run under the cover so you have a consistent light, the LED light that's consistent because the test swatches that it's learned have been learned using this color temperature and this lighting environment. So it's going to be most accurate in that environment. Now for this uh, demonstration, we'll leave it open. And the results are fairly, fairly accurate. It compensates as much as it can for the variations in lighting. But uh, when using out, being used outside, the cover needs to be on, not just to protect it from the elements and bugs, etc., but also to ensure that the lighting environment is consistent. So what we have here is a system that runs colorimetric tests. Now, it's loaded up right now with reagents 
from the API test kit, but it'll actually run any tests that uh, you have that are colorimetric. Right now it's just drawing in water from um, a jar of tap water and the exhaust is going down into a, another jar. But the idea of course is that this would pull in water from your aquatic environment that you're trying to measure. So uh, the system is run using a Raspberry Pi. In this case, a Model 2 or Model 3. It's Wi-Fi, so if you have a Model 2, you need to add a Wi-Fi dongle. Uh, Pi Zero would probably also work. Um, all the parts are 3D printed. The uh, various motors, uh, bearings, valves, etc., those are all available on Amazon. My intention is to release this all open source uh, into the community. So as part of that, then the information, the URLs on all the, the parts that are used here will be provided. The only thing that's not readily available is a print circuit board that I designed that is used for controlling the steppers and motors. And I have to figure out somehow how to make that available. All right. The syringes are also bought on Amazon. They're simple plastic 10 milliliter syringes that you can buy for, I think, 100 of them for $18. No needles are included or anything. Um, and they are what the reagent fits in and also the, uh, the mixing tube. So, uh, let's start the test here. And then we'll start it from my phone, but any web interface will do. You can also, of course, be started uh, based on schedules, etc. You can schedule them however you want them to run, uh, whatever sequence. There's actually 12 reagents here, although the center one isn't really used, uh, that can be used to perform tests. Um, so, and with those reagents, then you can, it goes through the necessary steps. So let's go ahead and start a test. I'm going to do a pH test. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see how the system works. What it's doing right now is cleaning the cylinder. It's basically going to go through a cycle of uh, making sure the cylinder is clean and it does it twice. As you see, there's a little electro magnet and a magnet that's used to agitate the solution. Uh, some tests also require that the reagent be agitated and a similar process is used if you need to uh, agitate a reagent. Next, it needs to uh, fill the mixing cylinder. The pH test actually requires 5 milliliters, so it's going to make sure it has that amount. Now, you may not be able to see it on the screen, but there's a plunger slowly lowering. It's going to dispense three drops. Um, it's running fairly fast right now. But what it'll do is once it hits the uh, plunger, it's going to slow down and you'll see three drops being dispensed. So it'll be a few seconds more. Again, if this had been a test that required agitation, there would have been uh, activity occurring inside that cylinder. Some tests require more than one uh, reagent, and of course it accommodates that by dispensing multiple reagents. It's about ready. You will see it's first drop, second drop, 
third drop. Now it's backing off, mixing it. I just got a message on my phone saying that the pH was 7.2 um, You can of course set alarms. You can, uh, all these statistics are available if you want to look at information historically. It's now going through a cleaning process. Uh, as I mentioned, had there been more uh, steps in the test, it would have performed those. If there had been additional tests queued up, it would have performed those. Um, the last thing you're going to see it do uh, is retracting the plunger and it rotates back into place. The last thing you're going to see is it's going to lift these little stoppers. It's going to make sure that they're positioned correctly. Um, but these stoppers are used then to uh, stopper the end of the syringes so that uh, no air gets in there and dries out the solution. Okay, so it looks like it's completed its processing, it's parked the, uh, the unit. So this is the auto tester. Um, so again, my name is Stephen Hayes. Uh, from rogogardens.com. If you have any questions at all, please send me an email. Uh, the email is info at rogogardens.com. Again, I'm going to release all of this as open source to the community. Uh, but it is a fairly difficult build. Uh, it requires a large format printer since some of the parts are fairly large and probably uh, at least two days worth of printing time, uh, which may be more than some people want to. So if you have any interest in uh, manufacturing this, uh, please contact me. Um, and thank you for your time. Thank you.